Finally, Mr. Chairman, I am grateful for the strong support of the Congress in funding the Anti-Bioterrorism Initiative for the past three consecutive years. And given our growing recognition of bioterrorism as a genuine threat to the nation, we intend to mobilize our skills and our resources to put in place the kind of infrastructure that will be necessary to contain and manage the consequences of a terrorist event, should one ever occur. Thank you again for your courtesy in inviting me here today, and now I look forward to your questions. Thank you for your testimony. And as is the practice of this committee, which now has almost a 24-hour tradition, we recognize the chairman of the full committees who participate uh, first. So, chairman Warner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we welcome your testimony. It was very encouraging, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Um, you're right on top of this issue. And uh, I found your statement quite reassuring. Um, you mentioned the uh, top priority in your office, special assistant reporting director. You're going to call a meeting of all your um, organizational pieces of your structure to see what they're doing, much like what we're doing here. I also suggest to you the following, two other sources of assistance and help. I have found that our universities and perhaps to some extent maybe colleges are doing some valuable research in a wide range of these areas. One in my state, Virginia Tech particularly, is, is working in the area of the bio because uh, they have a lot of assets that can be devoted to this. I would hope you or in conjunction with the Vice President's task force can figure out how we marshal the enormous resources in our university and college uh, structure to bring to bear their expertise and ideas. I think we'd be well advised, given the, uh, I think, the urgency of this whole task, to begin to, uh, to make some grants here and there to, to encourage this type of research. Now, uh, Senator, if I could quickly yes. respond, we are already starting to do that. Good. Uh, one of the, one of the um, um, uh, air bases in uh, Mississippi. We have taken over part of that. Is it Mississippi or Alabama? Alabama? Alabama. And we have hired uh, several of the colleges to come and teach first responders on how to deal with bioterrorism, how to deal with chemical spills, and so on. And Texas A&M has taken the lead on that. And it has been very effective. And we're going to expand that program and we're putting out grants and we're asking the universities to come to the base and to uh, instruct and to give us the information. So I appreciate your comments and I, I hope that you uh, are reassured that we are already started down that path. I am. The other source is other nations. Uh, this problem, mm -hmm. particularly in your area, the biotech, it knows no boundaries, it knows no culture. It can strike anywhere at any time. Uh, again, some assessment of what other countries are doing, how we might share our knowledge with them, their knowledge with us. I think we've got to marshal that resource also. Now, I mentioned that to uh, uh, Secretary Powell yesterday, but I would hope within the vice president's structure you, you would uh, have some some structure by which we can gain the knowledge from these other nations as they progress to deal with their own preparedness in this area. We have to do that, and I thank you for the advice. It's just, uh, you know, it's with the uh, importation and the, and the ease in which uh, these pathogens could be transported in, we need as much information, much cooperation with all the nations in order to make sure that we are as protected as we possibly can be. And I share with you your concern. But in order to attract the research we'll need and to create a surge capability for emergencies, what partnerships do we need within our own structure of universities, your department, and other areas? How do we structure that? The real thing that we need is to continue down the the path of improving the infrastructure of our public health agencies. Uh, for many years, the public health agencies have been sort of uh, forgotten about. And 
I don't make any criticism or any accusation. It's just a matter of fact that the public health agencies have not been rejuvenated enough. And we, they have to be our first-hand responders. Uh, they're the ones that are going to have to have the surveillance. They're going to have to have the monitoring equipment. They're going to have to be able to get the information into CDC quickly uh, to be able to recognize that there is uh, something uh, amiss here and get the information down to CDC so we can analyze it quickly and get one of our response teams in there. Uh, states and local units of government have got to be the first responder, and I just don't know if they're equipped knowledge-wise or equipment-wise yet to do so. And that's got to be number one. The second thing is I think we have to do a better job at the federal level, coordinating all of, a, all of this, uh, uh, the tools and the assets that we have to bring to bear if, in fact, there is a bioterrorism outbreak. Well. Uh, because it could be uh, could be quite extensive. Great. We've uh, used this chart throughout our hearing, I think, as a copy at your desk, showing the complexity of the of the situation that was inherited by uh, President Bush, um, and uh, I, I'm, I just commend our president and vice president for taking charge of this thing and, and doing the best we can. Only been in business 100 days, we made considerable progress. Um, Mr. Chairman, knows uh, completes my uh, question. But one last is stockpile. You know, I've had some familiarity with stockpiles in the Pentagon for years. We put our strategic things. That is a very difficult challenge. It is. You've got not only to put it together, you've got to work on its aging. Uh, hopefully it'll never be used, but nevertheless, it's got to be there. How you take the stockpile and, and literally divide it in certain areas of our nation geographically so that it can be transported quickly uh, to a site. What's the mechanism by which you'll do the uh, transfer of this? In many instances, some of this stuff is quite volatile. Um, have, you, have you had a chance to look at that yet? Yes, we have. And we have uh, had several studies on it. And uh, um, are we satisfied? No. Uh, I mean, it's not only it's not only the inventory that we have to keep up to date. We have to make sure that uh, it still has its potency. We have to make sure that it's environmentally safe, but also uh, safe otherwise. And uh, it's sort of you know uh, uh, the Veterans Administration pretty much has control of the purchases of the drugs, and then we have to enter into contracts with them. And CDC is also very much involved in it, and so it just needs. Further refinement, but it's very important. We think that we have done uh, quite well. There was a, a mishap a few years ago, as you know about, and since then a lot of things have been taking place, and we put in some new computer systems and new safety uh, techniques that uh, we think are, are going in the right direction. It's not there yet, but we're on our, we're on our way. And I want to thank you and the other members of this committee for having holding hearings on these subjects because what you're doing, Senator, is you're bringing the coordination to the forefront. You're making, you're forcing us to work together, which I think is absolutely a necessity. I, I, that is a commendation uh, owing to our two co-chairs here and the majority leaders and the minority leader. Lastly, uh, as you know, the Department of Defense has been struggling, and I don't say that by way of criticism, condemnation, no. because the committee of which I'm privileged to be a member of Armed Services has for years been dealing with, say, the anthrax and the inoculation that is required of Works. certain military personnel, depending on where they're deployed in the world. You'll have to address that as to whether or not some of these first responders will have to uh, uh, take inoculation so that they can effectively go into these areas. That's true. It's a big question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Here you go.